Interesting. This can be used to check an engine's health. Three, two, one. Good day everyone, Garage King here, and I just picked up this X-Tool D7S bi-directional scanner. It's supposed to perform a bunch of special tests and resets for your car. So you know what, we're gonna test it on a few vehicles that I have. We're gonna test it on an Audi, an Acura, and a GMC Terrain. Now, while I'm removing the charging cables and doing a little bit of an inspection here, let's discuss. These are quite popular on Amazon. They're not full-fledged professional scanners that cost thousands of dollars. So why would someone who, say, tinkers with their car be interested in one of these devices? I'm counting the pennies in the ashtray. There's two. Exactly, it's so they can save a little bit of money knowing they're not gonna get ripped off. So let's take a closer look at this scanner. We can see it's got three ports, one for the OBD2, there's a USB, there's a power cord, and it even has this cool little stand on the back. Now it does come with a packing list and a quick start guide. So let's fire it up and see how it does. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is just update everything. And keep in mind, this scanner offers three years of free updates. So in this price range, that's pretty respectable because once you start getting into the scanners that cost a little bit more, the updates can wind up getting a little bit more costly. It's easy to check for updates. You can see there, all software is up to date. Now, I found the menu very easy to use. And if you're paying attention earlier, it did come with a user's manual, but if you lose it, it's not a big deal because this one does have a full copy of the user manual right integrated into the scanner. So very, very easy to use. Here's the main screen. You can see there's a browser, kind of neat. You can go incognito or just with a regular new tab. Here, I'll push new tab and you can see this is real time speed. Here's your browser gonna pop up. So there's our Google. It does have a few more functions, but they are for purchase. For example, there's the endoscope and yes, I'll say I wanna install this application. So let's install it. The scanner is gonna quickly install it, but it's going to ask me to connect to the endoscope. So I don't have the endoscope, so I can't say how well it works because there we go, if we click open, you can see I just don't have one. In terms of reset functions or your special functions, you can see here, I'll just scroll down and let you take a look. You can see it does have quite a bit of special functions. Now remember, they are gonna vary depending on which vehicle you have. I found when I was testing it, different vehicles had different capabilities. Now in terms of coverage, you can see here we're on the Europe. If we look at the top, it does say Europe there. Here's all the European vehicles. There's lots. We can switch to America here. Let's check what we got in America. And you can see there's all the vehicles in America. If we go to Asia, there you can see our Japanese vehicles are coming up and Asian vehicles. So coverage isn't an issue with this scanner. It pretty much covers, I think, all of them, which is pretty much standard for all, most scanners anyway that you would buy. So I don't think that's anything special, the coverage. Most of them now will pretty much cover, you know, whatever you're working on unless you're working on something really crazy. So let's do some tests now. So we have our Acura here. So we're gonna do an automatic scan. Might as well do an all system scan. Now, just to let you know, this is running at 20 times because I don't wanna waste the video time. So I did speed this up. You can see fault with TPMS and that's just low tire pressure. So that's not a big deal. Our super handling all wheel drive is showing a few codes and also our ABS is showing a few codes. And that's probably just due to the storage. I stored this vehicle, so it's probably just run down a little bit. So I'll stick it on the charger but we definitely want our brakes to be good. So I'm gonna make sure I check that one later after the vehicle is fully charged up. So let's get into the main menu here and this is the actuation test. So if you're listening close there, you would have heard the radiator fan. Now here we're doing a battery consumption test and I don't see anything abnormal here. So that's good. We don't have to worry about parasitic draw. Next, let's test the electronic throttle control system. So the ETCS. So let's check it and see what happens. So we can click yes here and it's gonna command it open and closed. And then it should tell us after uh, the end of the test if we have passed or failed. So test is complete. Let's see what it says. There we go. The system is normal. Next up, we have a test that's really handy if you're trying to detect misfires. It is one-stop injector, so you can actually turn off one injector at a time. So here you can see we have six injectors because this is a six-cylinder engine, and I can turn them on or off and you can listen. Mm. 
Not sure if you heard, but I hope you could hear. The engine got a lot rougher when I turned off a fuel injector. Now what we're gonna do is do a DI fuel pressure test. It's asking us to wait a moment, and it is testing the high fuel pressure. And then after this, it should test the low fuel pressure uh, because this is a direct injected engine, and it will give us the results this car is normal, and this scanner can produce a bunch of live data and graph it. For example, up there I have the mass airflow sensor, but what's kind of cool is our cylinder crank speeds. So there we have cylinder crank speed number one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click them all off so we can have all six cylinders, and I'm gonna overlay the graph. Now this is excellent for checking anomalies within your engine because you can check for a weak cylinder, and some of the causes of a weak cylinder could be a simple valve adjustment, or it could be a bad valve, worn valve guides perhaps, or even bad cylinder rings. So if one is out of the range compared to the others, it could be indicative of a problem. And how it gets this data is the acceleration from the power stroke of each cylinder. There's a slight acceleration when there's a power stroke. So that's how it gets that. Now, let's go into a different module. Here we're going to, into the actuation tests of the body control module and we're going to test some things. So there you can see we've tested the hazard lights. Now maybe you're looking at a door not working. So here you here you can see we can lock the doors. So that's locking all doors. And then same thing, we can unlock the door. So it's an easy way to tell if you have a bad switch or maybe if it's something mechanical within the door. So let's check for something different. And if you remember me earlier saying it doesn't support all of the tests and it does vary depending on the vehicle we can scroll through and let's just find one so say for example here we got drive by wire you can see right there we can click drive by wire it'll communicate and then it's going to tell us this vehicle does not support that particular test so like as i mentioned earlier it doesn't support everything even the electronic brake servo doesn't support that one maybe because this acura is a 2014 so it is getting a little older it's not a brand new vehicle this vehicle is already 10 years old but just to give you an idea there's some of the things you can do. We can even go into the transmission control module or the TCM. We can look at live data. That would be kind of boring. Let's go into the actuation tests. These are what I really like doing. So I wanna see if it'll do something with the transmission. So let's test the line pressure solenoid. So it says line pressure solenoid is cycled on and off five times. So we're gonna turn off the ignition switch. That's fine. Let's do that. And let's cycle it through the test and see what happens. I'll try to do some editing here and bring up the background noise and see if you can hear it. So I could definitely hear it working. So now I'm in the ABS system and let's check the warning system. So we're gonna turn on some warning lights and there you go. That's a light you never wanna see when you're driving brake system problem. Let's see what else we can turn on. There you go, there's our anti-lock. Let's change vehicles. So I just jumped into this Audi and actually I did do an oil change. So let's reset the oil on this Audi. And you know what? Let's see what this X-Tool D7S can do on this Audi. So interesting enough, it says after model year 2019, you have to keep the hood open. So never saw that before, but anyway, not a big deal. Let's go for automatic detection. Yes, it did find our Audi. It is a Q3. It is a 2012 and after this one is a 2015 now for the automatic scan I've sped it up it's actually taking six seconds in this video but I'm at 20 times speed so if you do the math six times 20 is 120 so it took two minutes so if you're wondering the actual time was two minutes and we found a passive or sporadic code for intake manifold runner position and a very small evap leak which could have just been the gas cap so I'm gonna reset them and if we wait a moment there there you can see it's all green so the reset and I'll just monitor that intake manifold runner position. So now we're gonna reset the oil. The one thing I found was it was very easy to reset the oil. I've used other scanners uh, for German vehicles and I did find this one to be easier than the average scanner. Let's just say that they all have their menus that you have to go through, but I just found this one was quite easy to do and there was absolutely no issues at all uh, when I was doing it. And as you saw there on the menu, I could even alter the kilometers and the time if I wanted to do that. So that's the one thing I'll really give this scanner thumbs up for. I just found it was really easy for the reset features. Stay with me, people. We're almost done. Take a look at the dash. This is not the Audi anymore. This is a GMC terrain. So we're going to go into our special functions right here. Take a quick look. Just to remind you, there's all of the special functions. Now, as you saw before, they don't work for every vehicle. Every vehicle is a little bit different. So let's go into the GM and just do a few tests. So let's 
hit automatic detection. Yes, it detected our vehicle fine. If you notice, I'm going fast now. We're already just under the 10 minute mark for the video. So I know we're getting a little long in the tooth here. The one thing I should notice is if I pan into the bottom here, you can see it's done 14 to 21 tests. So it actually tells you how many tests it's doing and it does vary per vehicle. So let's speed it up here. There you go. Are you even surprised we have camshaft codes with this GMC train? We all know they have timing chain issues and these camshaft codes point right to it needing a timing chain. We all know they get loose on these engines and we have problems with them. So no surprise there, it doesn't even surprise me. So let's click on the engine. It is a 2.4 liter engine. Let's see what else we can come up with. Here I'm going into the body control module because body control module is always fun. It's always got a lot of cool things you can do. So if we look at our menu right here, what do we want to play with this time? Maybe let's play with the window wipers and see if they actually work. So we are going to highlight one and then what I'm going to do is show you right up here. They are not on. We are going to pan back down and I am going to turn them on maybe low. Let's click the low button right there and you can see the windshield wipers are on. One thing that did catch my eye was this compression test. I thought it was gonna do a static compression test, but it actually doesn't. Once you enable it, it opens the throttle position to 100%. You can see right there, it cuts out the fuel so you can actually crank it over with a manual compression gauge and not have to worry about the vehicle starting. So it does make life a little bit easier. So what did I think about this X-Tool D7S? Well. To be honest, I liked it. I found it very easy to use and for the home mechanic, you do get a lot of value. Anyway, that is it for my weekly video. If you have any questions, anything like that, please leave them below. That is it for now, Garage King over and out, and I hope to see you next week.